Okay, it is Ask Me Anything time for the week, and the question that you have put towards me was, Brian, how did you compete and succeed at MIT? And uh, this is an interesting question. A lot of people want to hear a lot about MIT and my banking days, so I will I will give you uh, a few more insights and then uh, maybe we can move on to some other topics. But since there's the interest, um, I'd love to address it for you guys. For those of you that don't know, MIT stands for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And I was trying to explain this to my 11-year-old the other day, the difference between a university and an institute. And um, I guess an institute specializes more in a university, hence the Latin root word universal is a little bit more of, a, of an overall education. But MIT is considered a uh, probably one of the world's greatest technological schools there is when it comes to science and engineering, computer science, and even the Sloan School of Management is quite highly regarded, probably top five business schools in the world. And so for me, when I was growing up, I was always into science and science fair projects, and I love all that stuff. I was a real uh, nerd, really was. Um, uh, but uh, And so for me, I always wanted to pursue that in my higher education, and I really had two big choices, and those were Caltech, which is the California Institute of Technology, very famous for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, um, for a lot of really famous Nobel Prize winning people. It's in Los Angeles, it's actually where my father went to school. And then on the opposite coast, complete opposite in Boston, actually in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right next to Boston, is MIT. And there were other great schools I applied to and was accepted to Cornell. I actually applied to University of Pennsylvania. I applied to Stanford but didn't get accepted, funny enough, but my brother did. And my brother studied computer science there. Um, he didn't get accepted to MIT, kind of funny enough and um, you know that's where I ended up going I personally really needed a change from San Diego and so uh, Boston was just so welcome and I love the ur urban environment I kind of grew up in the suburbs because San Diego is all one big suburb basically so I was really looking for the challenge but to get back to MIT um, first of all I just want to say a few things about smarts because I'm going to talk about kind of how I was able to get straight A's my first term at MIT and all that kind of stuff I'm not what I would call super smart. I'm not genius level smart. And um, I say that quite honestly um, because uh, my brother and my father, um, Freeman, um, they are super smart. These guys are like proper genius type level. My brother was, you know, uh, doing college level computer science stuff when he was like 14, 13. And my dad is whole nother next level stuff. I mean, really smart. And so these guys, when I'm around them, you know, they understand concepts that I just, I just don't get. You know, what I was good at, I think I got half of those genes on the Rose side, and I got the other half, which were the Benedict genes, which was my grandpa, who was a horse trader and a cattleman from Arizona, and really a business guy, and really a guy who ran businesses and knew people better. So I think I got half and half. But at MIT, what I learned quite early on was, is that we're all 18 years old when we all got there, freshmen from all over the world, and we were just kids. And you're away from your parents for the first time, and so, the um, tendency is to go buck wild, as they would say in the hip hop world, and um, you know, go crazy and, and uh, drink until you uh, uh, drink your until your liver stops, which I did, and party because I lived in a fraternity house and at MIT. A little known fact, most people don't know, but when I was there from '89 to '93, um, fraternities, which is the Greek system where uh, guys have uh, brotherhoods and things like that, was responsible for like 40% of the housing, and so because of that, uh, you had to move right in as a freshman, and I was living with 50 dudes, um, average age 20, uh, oldest age 22, and we were like the little Lord of the Flies, man. We cooked for ourselves, we cleaned, we partied, we studied, some of us, and some guys just went absolutely crazy. And they went, we had a pool table and a foosball table, and some guys just played pool for a year straight, and they never went to class because there's no one telling you what to do at university. And so, what I found early on was I could outwork guys that were out smart, that were smarter than me. And then I found that it was a game. And one of my good buddies from Zeta Psi, his name is Hank Sautel. What's up, Hank, if you're listening? Um, Hank went on to law school at Tulane, worked uh, at a New York law firm in the patent office, and now he's a chef and teaching cooking school out in, uh, in Portland. And Hank said to me one time, he said, Brian, he said, uh, MIT was a game. 
And he's like, you knew how to play the game. And, uh, and, and I did. And I just knew that if you had to put these hours in and you could maybe drink on Thursday night, but you better get your ass in, study all day Saturday, all day Sunday. You better go 24 hours if you have to, and you better just get your shit done and get things done. And that's how I was able to you know, get that first 5-0, which is all A's in my first semester of my sophomore year at MIT in mechanical engineering and, uh, and, a, and a few other things. And so that's really how I did it. And from there, it just became a system. And you know, you could argue that's how businesses succeed and, and it's not always the smartest guy in the room ever that gets the job done. And it really was outworking it, finding my limitations and finding how I can succeed. Same when it comes to training and staying in shape or any other business or any other skill. It's all about understanding discipline, understanding what you have to do, understanding what you don't have to do, uh, don't get caught up in the wrong things, and probably a lot of the things that David Allen talks about, which is getting things done. I think I've had a lot of those ideas in my head for a long time, and when I listen to David, I realize that I've been doing some of those things, not all of them, but some of those things regularly, which is writing things down and the weekly review list and stuff like that. So. Quite honestly, that's what happened to me at MIT. I was definitely surrounded by super smart guys, and some of the guys in my fraternity were just like Psh, next level type type dudes, and they got stuff done too. But really how I competed was just making sure I was got the work done, got the discipline done, put the hours of studying in, and I really wanted it bad. And for me, every grade was uh, my future career. And so like every, whether it was an A or a B, I used to calculate my GPA, and I knew that if I had above a certain one, I'd have a chance on Wall Street of getting a job or this job. And, it's really competitive, so it's not like you can just get a degree from MIT. Your first year or two, it really matters what your grades are and stuff like that. So that was the deal, and by the time I was four years there, I went to the Sloan School of Management, took courses there, applied for the five-year program, got in, decided I didn't want to hang out with a bunch of boring ass MBA students, and so then I went straight to Wall Street. So that's kind of my story there. I hope that helps. Um, uh, I don't know if that's exciting or, or not, um, but I have really fond memories of being at MIT. But, but honestly, after four years, I was sick and tired of the place. I was sick of my fraternity. I was sick of everything, and I really needed to go. I was anxious, and I needed to go to New York City and start trying to kick some ass there, or get my ass kicked, um, which is the whole banking story. Um, but uh, being at MIT was an honor every day. I think about that place with pride and reverence, and um, you know, I, I don't really d drop the name that much, but I'm really proud of being there, and I was with exceptional people, learning exceptional things, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. I wouldn't have gone to any other school, and it was worth it, and it was a lot like uh, Joe DeSena said. It was uh, very uncomfortable, and it really pushed me, but once I realized I could do it, I realized I could do anything, and so I think in the back of my mind, after that, when I've ever had challenges, I've been like, dude, I competed with the best in the world and, uh, and I beat him or, or got just as high. And so I always was like, if you can do that, you can do this. So it was a real top confidence boost. So definitely if anyone listens, put yourself out of that comfort zone and strive for those great things or you know, stop smoking or losing that weight or all that stuff because you'll find that you build on those successes. And then you're like, wait a second, I am a badass. Wait a second, I can do all this stuff. And it's amazing how far discipline can get you through. And um, you know, delaying that gratification as Joe DeSena would say, and all those things really help. And they separate the players from the suckers, you know? They, they, they separate the hardcore uh, pimps from the, uh, the wannabes, you know? It's really having that game and staying focused and being icy with yourself. And so uh, that's how I think I had um, the success at MIT. So I hope that answers everything for you guys. If you got any more questions, um, leave them below. Leave me your comments. Let me know what else you want to hear. Uh, somebody asked me about New York versus London. I can do that next week if you guys want. Just let me know. Uh, subscribe for the YouTube gods and uh, come over in the Academy check it out we got the coolest people over there we have the most awesome social network people are doing my kettlebell challenges people are running my 5k challenge people love my webinar we got live episodes we got um, discussions we got groups we got a meet up at the studio next week we got another one in June we got a live event coming up later this year it's all kicking off and it all happens at the Academy if you want to get in touch with me honestly the best way join the Academy send me a friend request and I'm chatting with people all day long it's the best way to get a hold of me I'm not as good on email, I got to admit, so uh, there you go. I'll see you guys over on the Academy. Um, now I'm back to the studio. Take care of some business. Peace.